Science is real from the Big Bang to DNA. And we're back. Welcome back to part two of our oxidation reduction discussion. In the first part, we looked at what an oxidation reduction reaction actually is and looked at how to identify oxidation states. Now we're going to get a little more complicated and start balancing those reactions that don't appear to add up upon first glance. Let's take this example. We have a reaction here with dichromate reacting with nitrous acid to form chromium-3 ion and a nitrate. Right off the bat, I notice something's missing. Where'd my hydrogen go? It can't just disappear. Law of conservation of matter. Well, when often when you're writing redox reactions, we sort of stick to the meat and potatoes of what's actually reacting. But now it's our job to use our chemistry knowledge to balance that. Don't worry, there's a series of steps, piece of cake. All right, so let's start with our knowledge of redox. We know that in a redox reaction, we're changing our oxidation states. So that seems like a good place to start. Let's figure out the oxidation states of all the things we're reacting. We're going to go to our rules, and we'll start with our monatomic ion, the chromium-3. We know from rule one that the chromium-3 will have an oxidation state similar to its charge. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that in as positive 3. Great. The next thing we want to look at are our oxygens. We have no peroxides in this reaction and no just plain oxygen gas. So every oxygen in here will have a negative 2 oxidation state. So let's go ahead and fill that in. Negative 2, negative 2, negative 2. Now we can use those oxygens to figure out the oxidation states of everything else up here. So let's do that now. I'm going to start with my dichromate since it's at the end here. We have seven oxygens, and those seven oxygens each have an oxidation state of negative 2. That means overall the oxygens contribute a negative 14 charge. The dichromate has a negative 2 charge overall when you consider the chromiums. So what plus negative 14 gives us negative 2? Hopefully you said positive 12. Well that's great, but is that the oxidation state of chromium? Nope, there are two chromiums in this one. So, since there are two chromiums that add up to positive 12, that means each chromium has a positive 6 oxidation state. There you go. Now we're done with dichromate. Let's move on to nitrous acid. All of these are nonmetals, which means that the hydrogen will have a positive 1. This is a neutral compound, which means that overall there's no charge. So as you, as you add up everything, it's got to equal zero. We have two oxygens, each with a negative two charge, which means overall it contributes a negative four. So positive one and negative four overall make a negative three. That means nitrogen is going to be a positive three. I thought nitrogen forms a negative 3 charge. Well, that is true in ionic compounds. It does tend to accept three electrons, but we're not talking about basic bonding here. We are assigning values that we can use to see if nitrogen changes its oxidation state. Fortunately for us, nitrogen is actually pretty versatile in how it combines with other things. So it can take on many oxidation states. That just leaves us with the nitrogen for the nitrate ion. Simple enough. We've got three negative twos with an overall charge of negative one. So three times two is negative six, which means we need a positive five to balance that out. Now we're going to go ahead and figure out what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. Looking at my reaction, I see that chromium has gone from a positive 6 to a positive 3. 
it changed its charge. In going from a positive 6 to a positive 3, it became less positive, which means it had to gain electrons, which means it has been reduced. Anything else change its charge? Why, yes, that helpful nitrogen. It has changed its oxidation state from positive 3 to positive 5 which means it lost electrons, which means it was oxidized. We've now figured out what's been oxidized and what's been reduced. We can also figure out what the oxidizing agent and reducing agent are in this reaction. What helped chromium become reduced? Well, what did it react with? Nitrous acid. Nitrous acid is considered the reducing agent because it helped the chromium in the dichromate become reduced. Likewise, what helped the nitrogen become oxidized? Well, the dichromate. That means the dichromate is the oxidizing agent. Step two is to go ahead and write the half reactions. Half reactions break the oxidation and reduction parts up into two partial reactions that let us really focus on those moving electrons. In this case, the reduction half reaction is going to be the dichromate becoming the chromium-3 ion. And the oxidation half reaction is going to be the nitrous acid becoming the nitrate ion. Now that we have the two half reactions, let's go ahead and balance them. That actually is step three. There's actually four steps to balancing each half reaction. The first thing we're going to do is balance the atoms, except hydrogen and oxygen. But all the other atoms involved will go ahead and make sure they're balanced on both sides of the reaction. So I have two chromi chromiums over here and one chromium over there. So just like normal balancing, I'll add a two. There. Now everything, all the atoms that are not oxygen or hydrogen are balanced on the reduction half reaction. Let's do the same to the oxidation half reaction. Looking at nitrogen, already balanced, great. Let's move on to step two. Step two is going to be to balance the oxygens. Now the way we're going to balance the oxygens is by adding water molecules. Remember, these are aqueous solutions, which means there's plenty of water molecules that can participate if we need them to. And we do. So, we have seven oxygens on this side, which means on that side, I'm going to add seven water molecules. So each one will contribute an oxygen molecule. I now have seven water molecules on that side, and seven oxygens on this side. So our oxygens are now balanced for the reduction half reaction. If I do the same over here, I see I have two oxygens over here, three oxygens over there, which means I need one water molecule on the left side of the reaction. Now our oxygens are all balanced. The third step in balancing the half reactions is to balance the hydrogens. Now this is taking place in an acidic solution. I know it's an acidic solution because, hey, nitrous acid means we're dealing with acids, an acidic solution. So I have hydrogens floating around in there also. Even though this is a weak acid, a few of those H pluses were floating around in the water and contributed to this redox reaction. So we'll take advantage of that and add some hydrogens to balance out our hydrogens on both sides of the equation. So looking at my top equation, I've got 14 hydrogens because I added all those water molecules, which means I can add 14 H pluses from all those acids. On the bottom here, I've got one, two, and three hydrogens, which means I need to add hydrogen to the product side, specifically three H pluses. Okay, so now all my hydrogens are balanced, all my oxygens are balanced, and all the other atoms are balanced. 
the last step, step four, is to balance the charge. And the way we're going to do that is by balancing it with electrons. Looking at my reduction half reaction, I see overall the charge on the reactant side is going to be 14 minus 2 from that negative 2 over there. So overall, positive 12 on this whole side of my reduction half reaction. Going to the other side, I see I have two chromiums, both with positive 3 charges and water, which is neutral. So the other side is positive 6. Remember, electrons are negative. So whichever side I add the electrons to, it's going to bring down that positive, which means I'm going to need to add it to this side. Specifically, I'm going to add six electrons. In adding six electrons, I now make this overall charge positive six. And since the other side is positive six, that means we've accounted for that transfer of electrons. Now just as a check, it makes sense, right? Reduction, you're gaining electrons. Yes, it gained six electrons. Now looking at oxidation, I see that over here I have a net charge of zero. And over there, I have a negative one and positive three, essentially, which means overall a charge of positive two. To get that side to equal zero, I'm going to need to add two electrons. And there you have it. I balanced my, all my atoms and my charges for these two half reactions. Our next step is to figure out our overall equation. But to do that, we've got to get rid of those electrons. I mean, have you ever seen a reaction? equation that included electrons? No, because they don't really belong to us to do is get rid of them.